NVIDIA's mini supercomputer is disappointing a whole bunch of people. Their water cooling gaming handheld straight from the factory now and Windows, uh, you should just switch to Linux. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, October 29th, 2025. And we're gonna start off today with details about NVIDIA's DGX Spark that launched last week for roughly the tune of $4,000. This is a mini little computer that's supposed to provide one petaflops of performance and John Carmack of ID Technologies, as well as various other famous ventures that he's been involved in. And appears to be underwhelmed by NVIDIA's promises on this, stating that it's only a maxing out at 100 watts and delivering about half the quoted performance, noting that it's just not doing well. It's supposed to run at 240 watts, only runs at 100. It only delivers half the teraflops that it's supposed to see, and it's running real hot, and it's spontaneous rebooting appears to be a problem for other people, and asking if it was derated before launch. Now, I do want to comment on this because it is not necessarily as clear cut as he's making it seem because according to his tweet, he's inferring that one petaflop of FP4 performance, which is what NVIDIA rates the DGX Spark for, is equal to 125 teraflops of dense BF16 performance, which is not how you can work across different levels of sparsity and the different teraflop ratings. FP4 is not equal to a specific amount of BF16. It's just not necessarily as clear cut. And as somebody pointed out in the Tech Power Up comments that NVIDIA never marketed this as 125 teraflops flops of dense BF16. They market it as one petaflop of FP4, which was always a problem because very, very few LLMs out there right now use FP4 as the way that they allow you to interact with them. So you were never really gonna get that one petaflop of performance. It was just the highest number that Nvidia could throw out there so that people could say that they have a petaflop of performance in a little mini desk thing. So on one hand, it is not necessarily lying, but on the other hand, it is just just marketing fluff and it appears to be, you know, aggravating people in the industry, but turns out AMD coming to the rescue with them offering, potentially getting him a framework desktop with the Strix Halo chip, which is roughly about the same in terms of memory performance, 256 gigabytes to the 300 plus that's on the DGX Spark, but as 128 nonetheless. Framework coming in saying that they're happy to send a Strix Halo powered box for him to try and a higher up at AMD saying that he'll be on standby to support anything for that exploration. So it appears like Nvidia's marketing biting them in the butt a little bit with AMD coming in, swooping into the rescue with hopefully the framework desktop, maybe not disappointing so much in terms of what it claims it can do and what it can't. But a lot of this was actually sparked by Jake Tivy, formerly of LMG LTT, no longer there, has his own channel. Want to just give him a shout out, say, go check out his channel, Jacka, Jacka. I don't know how he wants me to pronounce it, but he has been releasing tech videos over on that channel on the regular and good work going on over there. You can definitely go subscribe to him if you want the details on all the new tech happenings that are out there while uh, UFD Tech is still trying to get our feet here in South Africa and can't, can't quite get access to the tech that he does. But while the DGX Spark might be half a supercomputer, you know what's not half of what it's supposed to be? Today's video is sponsored. When you spend a lot of time sitting, a comfortable chair makes a world of difference. Unfortunately, high-end chairs cost high-end money. That is, until today's sponsor, ProtoArc, dropped their newest sitter. ProtoArc's Flexor Pro Ergonomic office chair aims to deliver the feel and experience of a high-end chair at less than half the price tag. With features like a dual zone lumbar support and breathable Wintex mesh construction, your back will be feeling fantastic even after a record-breaking sitting sesh. The cushion on this bad boy is also 30% thicker and boasts a 55 degree density, so your hindquarters feel just as supported as your back. The Flexor Pro also makes it easy to adapt the chair to your specific body and need. You can adjust the seat depth to support your legs how you like, Move the 4D armrest up, down, front, back, side to side so that they can be right where your elbows need them. Then when it's time to kick back a little, you have a customizable recline tension so you can lean a little or lean a lot. ProtoArc also makes it super easy to replace whatever unfit chair you're currently in because the Flexor Pro comes together in 10 minutes without a single tool needed. Now is a better time than ever to grab this all new chair from ProtoArc. With code 15UFD, you'll get 15% off. So check out ProtoArc's Flexor Pro via the link in the description. Don't forget about ProtoArc's EC series of chairs either if a headrest is more your speed. Huge thanks to ProtoArc for sponsoring. Well, let's go ahead and talk about another thing you can play in a chair, but also involves Strix Halo. The One X 
player announcing their Strix Halo handheld that is water cooled straight from the factory. They unveiled this where it has an 8 inch 120 hertz display with 500 nits of brightness. 100% of the sRGB color space has up to 128 gigabytes of memory, has up to a 2 terabyte NVMe with another M.2 slot available, and it just has a little port back there where you can plug in the little water cooling to make it so that the Strix Halo chip has up to 100 watts possible with an external 85 watt hour battery, which is very similar to what GPD is doing with their Win 5. So sustained TDP of 80 watts in a handheld, very, very high, and then 100 watts with the water cooling. Just <laughs> we're getting absurd here. We're getting absurd with the gaming handhelds, but I love it. I love seeing what Strix Halo is capable of in smaller form factors. And the price point, you know, it's still expensive, $1,700 for the highest configuration. That's not necessarily that bad when you compare it to things like the ROG Flow Z13 and otherwise. The liquid cooler is $140, the battery pack $60. It does appear like you're gonna have to spend nearly two grand to get the whole kit and caboodle. It's gonna be a little expensive. And Creative, the company that's known for making the Sound Blaster sound card, has a new kit and caboodle that they launched on Kickstarter yesterday. They're showing off what a sound card looks like in 2025 with swappable hardware, retro gaming, and of course, AI powered apps. This little swappable dock situation is supposed to give you buttons and dials for you to interact with your PC. It supports Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5, it has 16 gigs of storage, 8 gigs of RAM, and a 6 tops NPU, which is kind of strange. It does remind me a lot of Cooler Master's Master Hub. However, this appears to be like a USB interface, whereas Creative's coming up with a wireless solution that works with various different operations, PS5, Mac, Linux, Switch, smartphones, etc. because of the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi interaction, as well as with uh, aux jacks and all of that. So I'm curious if you're uh, considering supporting that. I want to hear from you down below in the comments. And just talking about another peripheral set that is catching my eye, The Witcher 3 in Corsair celebrating the 10 year anniversary of the video game by releasing a little limited edition keyboard mouse and mouse pad situation. I just like it. I think it looks neat, but you know what? I'm going to need Reese to save me some money in order to be able to afford it. So Reese, do your deals. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. And hey, here's your first deal. Starting off, we have this Epo Maker and Orlick Lab with the F99 Pro Wireless Hot Swappable Mechanical Keyboard for only $66.49, making it $23.50 off. But then next up, we have this Asus Tough Game gaming B850E Wi-Fi AIM5 ATX motherboard going for $179.99 making it $50 off. And then lastly today we have this AOC 27 inch 1440p 240hz QD OLED gaming monitor going for $399.99 making it $150. This hits all the sweet spots in the monitor and hey grab one. And with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time man you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well Reese it looks like Samsung thinks they got too bad of a deal when it comes to selling $3,500 refrigerator because they now officially are rolling out ads to the smart refrigerators that people have in their various households. With the Family Hub Smart Fridge that starts from $1,900 going all the way up to $3,500, can now have a widget for cover screens that will show curated advertisements, which are not necessarily the same as personalized advertisements, which require collecting data, but rather they're just going to be there in a small rectangular box at the bottom of the screens that's going to rotate every 10 seconds, which sounds Sounds like a lot of data and phoning home back to Samsung servers, but you can change your little display that you have on the fridge and that'll change whether or not you have ads and you can also opt out of getting into the latest software update to make sure that you don't have this, but then you don't get other software updates that you absolutely need for a refrigerator. But I'm wondering, when are we gonna get Windows 11 powered fridges? Probably never, but you can guarantee they'd probably have some sort of BSOD, blue or black screen of death, and Windows, Microsoft trying to make that a little bit more helpful, I guess, with them starting to recommend and doing memory scans after you have a crash due to various issues. So it's gonna pop up saying that maybe you should run a little memory scan, and then you can click on it, and then it'll make it so that it can see if memory issues are potentially what is causing the problems on your PC. Just trying to make the the crashing system on Windows slightly better, slightly more helpful, which every single time I've ever used the troubleshooting utility, it's never yielded in any meaningful results or results at all. So 
we'll see how useful this feature actually is. Especially as it appears like 2026 might in fact be the year of Linux. With all the various different changes that have been happening to Windows 10 and Windows 11, getting people broiled up with Microsoft phoning home for gaming Copilot, ProtonDB announcing that they have nearly 90% of all Windows gaming titles at least launchable on Linux systems and their games that actually run without requiring user intervention is 42% of all new releases, which is up from 29% in the previous year, nearly a 50% improvement year on year in new releases that are actively working on the Penguin operating system. Now, there are still the issues of anti-cheat and various different applications that don't quite work with Linux just yet, but it does show that a lot of the work that Valve's been putting into making Linux gaming working is working for a lot of people. Platinum rated games are on the uptick. Gold rated games also doing pretty well. Silver rated games also doing well. And the ones that are bad or borked are diminishing. So it looks like Linux might have what it takes to switch people over. But this is actually where I'm gonna talk about one of the video projects that we're gonna be working on while I'm waiting on getting things like desktop set up. I'm gonna be working on switching over to Bazite as my main gaming operating system for the next couple of weeks and see how that little experiment goes and reporting back on uh, exactly how I find it. As somebody who doesn't play multiplayer games, doesn't play online or esports or competitive titles, it does seem like this is probably the way that I should, I should be going. And I went to the comments of yesterday's episode of Hot News and a lot of people upset with AMD for their naming schemes, but a lot of people in the past have been upset with me for my switch can being right here and worried that I knocked it over. So I set up my RTX Pro 6000 right next to me in the same arm plane and not a single person commented about how precarious the very expensive GPU is just sitting there. So strange that you're worried about a, a soft drink can, but you're not worried about this thing. I don't know. Well, we'll see what happens in the future. I'll see you back here for more of the Haas Tech News later. Thank <laughs> you.